Hey, I'm Eric Triplett, The Pond Digger. Today I have a really fun project I want to share with you. My son and I are going to install a frog pond. It's a really fun weekend project that you can tackle for very little money. I only have a few hundred bucks in materials. It's going to take us just a couple of short hours to get this thing done. And we're going to walk you through some of the steps to make your frog pond installation a whole lot easier. Let's get started. Before we dig into the project, I just want to cover our materials list real quick so you can begin taking notes. We're just going to do a small frog pond about 7 foot by 9 foot. So I have about an 8 by 12 piece of liner and underlayment setting over here. I have a few bags of gravel that we're going to cover the bottom of the pond with to help protect it from the sun. The UV doesn't want to get to the liner and then it'll make it look nice and natural. I have about a ton and a half to two tons of, of granite boulders that we'll use uh, in and amongst the pond and make it look like a little natural waterway. Found this really cool piece of driftwood that we'll use and we'll kind of maybe put it in there some way. And it's a nice material, it's a fallen log and the, the frogs that come to our backyard here, uh, they're tree frogs so it's a nice material for them to land on, do their croaking, attract a mate and then do their thing down in the water and, and leave some tadpoles for us to, to culture. I don't have any fancy tools. All I have is some shovels and a pick and a rake, and that's all we're gonna need to get this thing done. I lied, I actually have a level back here too. We're gonna level the bottom and make everything look uh, nice and even. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna lay out the, the pond's design, and then we're gonna start digging. To begin the layout, I have the edge of the pond. I, want, I don't want it to be any farther than this. So I'm gonna put a little spray can right there, spray paint. And then your foot is roughly 12 inches if with, a, with a boot on. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's roughly nine feet. I'm not looking for something exact right here. I want the back of the pond, so I know I'm gonna stay within that realm. If I'm gonna do a kidney, I want the back of the pond to be somewhere in this range. So I'll make that the back edge. Now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's the square of which I can do things. So oftentimes I'll come through, I'll spray this back end, nice curve, like the back of a kidney bean. I don't want to do a complete oval, so what I'll do is I'll bring this side out and then I'll come in. Like the inner curve of a kidney bean. And then I'll spray it out like that. So that's a nice looking kidney bean. Before we put the shovel in the ground, I want to be clear on a couple things. Since this is a frog pond, what is it that they require? They require warm water, they require still stagnant water, and that's what this is going to be. We are going to keep uh, aquatic plants in here and some mosquito fish in here. So when I say stagnant, you think it's going to be smelly and gross and green. That's not going to be the case. We're going to make it a beautiful ecosystem because we're going to help it get all balanced. So we're going to dig the pond down 12 inches. So when the sun hits it, the water warms up quickly. We don't want anything running in here. We don't want any pumps. Otherwise, the tadpoles could get damaged and injured. So we're going to begin digging right now. and We'll explain some more of those details along the way. Let's talk for a moment about why we're building a frog pond. Frog populations are endangered because of declining habitat and disease. By building a frog pond, you can do your part to help save these amazing amphibians. The pond is only 12 inches deep to encourage the warm water for the fast development of the tadpoles. Aquatic plants will provide filtration to keep the water crystal clear. I like to come through with a tamper on the bottom of our excavation. If there's any uh, rocks sticking up or protruding, it's a good time to get them just flattened down before we put the underlayment down. The underlayment will usually take care of it just fine, but it's a nice little added touch. It makes a nice smooth area for us. So we're going to go ahead and uh, put the underlayment down and then throw the liner on next. <laughs> 